So you're saying that with a high-end camera and a bunch of statistics, you still can't detect the difference. So there's no way a human could tell the difference. Basically, yeah. Hello and welcome back to Bland Man Studios, where I make creative stuff and talk about the technology behind it. Today we are continuing to answer the age-old question of can gaming in a virtual machine be just as fast as a native install? A couple weeks ago I made this video comparing frame rates between a native Windows 10 install and gaming the way I do it, in a Windows 10 VM running on a Linux host. A lot of you were really interested in those results and excited about the idea of testing latency too. So here we go. Okay, so in a general sense, Latency is just the amount of time between a cause and an effect. So in gaming, this typically means the amount of time from when you press a button to when you see the resulting desired action on screen. This is super important because if there's a long lag between when you press something and you see the result, it will totally break immersion and you won't be able to compete with other gamers that have less lag or lower latency. So today we are testing exactly that. We are measuring latency and then comparing a computer with Windows 10 installed to the exact same hardware running that same Windows 10 install as a virtual machine running on a Linux host. So for this test, we need a cause and an effect. Something the user does, and then something the user sees. And we need an easy way to measure the time difference between the two. I happen to know of a piece of software highly optimized for quickly processing user input and displaying it on screen. It's the fastest, twitchiest game I can think of, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Okay, so we need a really obvious action that we can measure the timing of. Wait, right there. Freeze. Rewind. Enhance. Right there. Do you see it? In the weapon change animation, the weapon disappears in exactly one frame, and then the character slowly pulls out the next weapon over the next few frames. So to get the latency, we just need to measure the time difference between when the user clicks the weapon change button and when the weapon disappears on screen. So how can we measure the time difference? Let's zoom back and actually record this in real life. I have my monitor set to 120 hertz, and my camera is set to 240 FPS, which means that my camera will capture twice as many frames as the monitor is getting from the computer. So I'll actually be able to capture the exact moment as the weapon disappears. And if I record that moment and the key press in the same video, I can measure the time difference between the two. I just have to count the frames from when the key is pressed to when the weapon disappears on screen. And then I can multiply that number by the amount of time that passes between two frames of 240 FPS footage, which is about 4.16 milliseconds. And for added scienciness, I'm going to drop objects from the same height every time, so I know the button is being pushed the exact same way every time. I'll do this a number of times for both the VM and the native install, take the averages, and compare the differences. What's awesome about this test is it addresses both sides of the problem. I addressed two flaws to the frame rate tests in the benchmarks video. And the first is that there is no measure of input lag and there's actually no user input at all. And the second is that even if the VM can render just as many frames per second, there's no way of telling if those frames are being shown with an output lag. But what's really cool is, since we're measuring here from what the user does to what the user sees, if either of those problems exist in the VM, we'll see it here. If you want to know the PC specs or the VM settings, check out that benchmarks video. The only difference here is that today I'm using a PCI USB card to pass the mouse and keyboard into the VM. When I first ran these tests, I got really excited because the VM was on average 2.5 milliseconds slower. This was really exciting because it meant the difference was measurable, but to casual gamers like myself, you're really not giving up that much by playing in a VM. I ran the numbers through a statistical tool called a t-test, which suggested there was a 13% chance that there was actually no difference between the two, and the variation I was seeing was just due to the small sample size. So I went back and collected more data. The only problem is when I did, the averages moved much closer together, and in the case of the mouse tests, the VM's average was actually a little faster. Okay, so this is bad for my tests because it suggests that the latency difference between the VM and the native install is so small it falls within the variation caused by my test methods. But 
it's good for VFIO because of that exact reason. This makes me think that the input and output overhead together of VFIO is likely under a millisecond. So even with these results, I don't think I would recommend VFIO if you're trying to squeeze every last drop of theoretical performance out of your rig. There is still an overhead even though I couldn't detect it here. But what this says to me is that if you've wanted to try this for a while, you'd enjoy gaming in a VM, or you like tinkering with your computer, you might want to give this a try, because while there are drawbacks, in-game latency doesn't appear to be one of them. There are links in the description if you want to check out the raw data yourself. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to stay bland.